Hello friends, this is Jana Benun and I am here to talk to you today about Essen Human Gospel of Christ and what this gospel is and um, before I start, many of you know that right now and I have explained to you we are under attack by a group of very demonic women, females. Uh, in some occasions some males have joined in as well and I know a lot of you told me not to even address this, but it's it's like getting, I'm literally harassed and stalked on every platform we have. So with false accusations and bringing and digging up the past and stuff like that. So you will be hear hearing about this anyway, because I, I contacted a lawyer and I'm going to make the entire thing public. Uh, there are two names only first names i will say cassia and maria who i personally believe have a uh, spirit of witchcraft they're witches uh, i believe these are spirit of demons in these women so we'll give you a little background before we come to a scene human gospel well the whole thing started with maria on my facebook and you know when you have a facebook she would say we were friends. No, I don't call everyone on my Facebook friends. I know they're called Facebook friends. But as you yourself know, there is many people on Facebook that you don't know, that you just don't know who they are. And I didn't know personally who she is. She was just one woman there occasionally saying something, but I never exchanged any words face to face. I have people on Facebook, they're my true friends, and we talk on the phone and we even meet, but not her. Well, she started this accusation of Adam Green, and I already spotted it's going the wrong direction of gossip and all kinds of accusations. And of course, I happened to be on his show, and my... Uh, Facebook post was posted there and I saw that the, where is this coming? You know, it's like experience, have an experience of, um, of all these uh, disturbing stuff going on before when people just make assumptions because supposedly Adam Green is not a Christian and he was making some videos against um, God of Old Testament and they believe that, you know, basically something that Adam did. Well, with Adam Green, I want to tell you, as most of you know, a lot of you watch him, Adam has exposed, he's an investigative journalist. He was brought up in Christian home, however, however, he himself is probably not Christian. And um, Adam invited us on a show twice or three times. And once we were discussing Noah Hyde laws, every time I'm on his show, I am welcome to speak my heart, my faith. Uh, I, I am welcome to speak about Jesus. And as you know, if Adam is not a Christian, Adam has an issue with today's American Christianity. As you know, he is exposing Zionist Schofield type of Christianity, which is about 98 or 99 percent of Christians uh, in Western countries. So he sees through this evil and the worship of state of Israel and the wrongly applied prophecies as a cover up and do you wonder he does not want to be christian so adam needs true real christians to explain to him that not not all of the christians are like that and that's not how prophecies should be even um you know explained to people the way that zionist christians do the ones who study scofieldism darby theology as i explained to you so that started all with that so before it all got ugly over adam i blocked maria and she got and anybody there who who was involved with all this gossip about Adam. So what I did was uh, just block them because I don't have time for gossip, right? So Maria started to, uh, she, she got extremely angry over me blocking her. So she started this quest 
on uh, finding who we are. What she did was doxing. Look up the word D-O-X-I-N-G. Uh, she went into public records, were looking for our addresses. It said that I was married to to men by name Joe Lopez. Uh, and then she made a video about all of this, uh, showing our, you know, public information online that anybody can look up basically. And keep in mind, it's not even updated properly. And some things are not even uh, true on this. And uh, she was saying, I'm married to both, to two men. She was saying then, or possibly Steve is not my husband, but he's, or, or maybe he is, but his name is Joe Lopez. That's his real name, which Joe Lopez is my ex-husband, father of my son, Ethan. And we are divorced for a very long time. Ethan was very small. And uh, my husband, Steve, raised him as his own child. So uh, she started putting all kinds of doubts and theories, theories, falsehood, assumptions up on a, on a YouTube videos. And surprisingly, some intelligent people, even with PhDs, bought into this and started to, you know, post more videos. And then um, what else did she do? Well, the jacket, the jacket that Steve bought, okay? And uh, you already know about the jacket. He bought it in this uh, army surplus store, which is similar to Goodwill store. Everything there is worn, old and used. And he bought this camel jacket and it had name Romero on it and patches. So whoever was the officer, that was by name Romero and his jacket, you know, was right there for sale. So Steve bought it because it was kind of cool jacket. So she started looking at what patches mean and, and then started making videos that Steve must be some kind of a secret agent. People posted his MK Ultra. He's wearing these patches and I mean, just complete, absolute lies, nonsense, digging into people, meddling into private life, making up assumptions, false um, assumptions. Then, of course, when this happens, the old enemies from long, long time ago got caught onto this. And here we go with Essene Humane Gospel. Now, let me give you a little bit of background. I came to Jesus Christ in the year of 2010 by miraculous meeting of Christ that came to me. Uh, I was already married to Steve. So when I married him, I was not a Christian, but I was in a Jehovah's Witness because I was born um, in, into a family that were Jehovah's Witnesses, where well, my mother was anyway, and she raised me that way. So all I knew was Watchtower and Jehovah's Witnesses. And as you know, Jehovah's Witnesses have a lot of false doctrines, but they're pretty good people. They're very nice people. Uh, and my entire social life was in that organization. I didn't know anything or anyone around uh, outside of that organization. I was brought up strictly within uh, watched our people. So my whole social life was there. So the, in August 2010, which that reminds me, I am about 10 years old now knowing Jesus. Jesus Christ came to me. It was a miraculous conversion. And he spent three days with me. And some of you, some of you, my friends know uh, the exact st story, how all of this happened. Well, I became an apostate to the Watchtower organization. And in Watchtower, they, uh, what they do is they, uh, they practice shunning. So my own family, my sister, my cousins, and then all of my friends I ever had have shunned me to the point they wouldn't say hello and completely withdrew from me. Uh, they they are encouraged to shun people who leave Watchtower. But I met Jesus. So that was, I was ecstatic and in love with Christ. Uh, so the shunning, 
of course it was painful, but I would never exchange it uh, and go back just to have friends because Jesus at this point meant a lot. Now, of course, I had a lot of Jehovah's Witness doctrines to undo. All I knew in my heart is that Jesus is God and that he is the Lord and Savior. And that's all I ever needed in my life was Jesus, not the man in Watchtower and those governing body. So um, that's the story as far as that. But then, of course, you, you are a baby Christian. You know Jesus, but I didn't know uh, doctrines properly or anything. So I actually founded the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. The purpose of that particular institution was to check on everything around the Bible, study the documents, study church fathers, study um, rabbinic writings, study extra biblical literature, study how the our Bible came about, study copies of uh, and, and then original languages of Hebrew and Greek. And I and keep in mind that I am just speaking here, giving a very short ver version of a very long, detailed story that I don't want to go into right now at this particular moment because of time. But anyway, so I founded the myself the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Of course, I had Steve next to me, who who is of Jewish origin. I have Jewish origin on part of my family as well. Uh, but uh, anyway, I had Stephen. He was a Zionist Christian slash um, what I would say quite deceived into Schofield type theology and open to anything. Uh, you know, um, we started doing Sabbath. And of course, I thought Steve knows better at this point, right? I was a Jehovah's Witness. Jesus came to me. So the only thing next to me, I had my husband and I had my husband to lead me. I was asking him questions. How does this work? How do I undo this doctrine? How do I undo that doctrine? And Steve had uh, Schofield theology. It was not true, real, bona fide gospel. Okay. So we became Torah Absorber, observers, and we went into fully observing Sabbath and moved to Israel to spread the gospel. I mean, still Jesus was important, of course, even for Steve, but spread the gospel. And uh, we considered Aliyah, Aliyah to Israel. And of course, we were on the full Zionist, uh, Schofield Christianity type of thing but very open to Torah observing Hebrew type of root movement, messianic movement, and all of that uh, stuff, as you know, from our past. So since we had Denun Institute of Biblical Research, I started researching church fathers. I wanted to research everything from beginning myself, and Steve was helping me. So I wanted to research church fathers and that's when I came to a sin human gospel, believe or not. Not as far as us being vegetarians. Yes, we are vegetarians. Also, I have broke this uh, recently a lot. I did eat a lot of salmon and even shrimp, I have to admit. So I did break my uh, vegetarian lifestyle, but uh, I'm trying to keep it. I'm trying to keep vegetarian and even vegan lifestyle. And it was prescribed to me in 2017, even by a doctor to help my health condition. But anyway, as far as Essene human gospel, the first idea where it came from was actually from study of the church fathers. Let me show you something. I don't have all of my material with me because it's actually not at a location I am in right now. Okay. You see, it, the Essene Gospel or the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, they're very similar. Also, another name is the Gospel of the Nazarene. Okay. And it or says the in here. Gospel of the Ebonites. Or Gospel of the Ebonites and the Essenes. 
So as we study history from church fathers, this is what we come to. Okay, so scholars talk about this all the time. The Gospel of the Holy Twelve was an inspiration and moral compass for he who labored many years to, uh, to create this website and make it available for free of charge to all students of biblical history. I'm going to leave you this so you can see what this is about. Now, the reason I didn't want to do this, but I'm forced to do this because these people from the past are... Uh, you know, accusing us we are still with gospel of the Holy Twelve, and we are not. We oh, actually the, the seen humane gospel is what we get accused of being part of. Yeah. Uh, and, and you have to understand that there is a lot of evidence from the early church fathers, and this is what led us down this road in the first place. Uh, we never found, though, any original or at least authentic, some kind of authentic document that could say that the humane gospel actually was derived from. Right. Like the Nagamati writings, which I don't agree with all that either. But the thing is, is mm -hmm. it's still, there are writings in the Nagamati, they're mostly Gnostic material, but they're uncovered, they're unearthed, they're original documents that scholars are able to examine and to, uh, you know, make their comments about we couldn't find that for the humane gospel, but there are church fathers, as Jana is saying, that speak of these documents in here, and even Pliny. One of the reasons why they call the other one the humane gospel is because Pliny the Elder, who was from the time of the apostles, had written in his own writings that two of the apostles were from the uh, Qumran village or the Essene community, and he also wrote that they were. I think he actually writes that they're vegetarians or something of that effect. Mm -hmm. These are type things that uh, when you're when you do research, yes. you you look at those facts that are historical, and it's what causes you to go on a quest to see. Okay, if that's the case, then is there a document out there that supports this? Is there some writing that we're not aware of? Uh, and so these things ended up getting out prematurely, though. And uh, right, well, I will, I will say all, all of these kind of basically, so you understand uh, from our point of view what actually happened. Because keep in mind, we were then an Institute of Biblical Research. That means that we researched anything around biblical materials. That's and how still do. And yeah, and that's how we were known. Okay, so basically, you have here Dead Sea Scroll, Gnostic Gospels of Nag Hammadi that were unearthed in, I think. I think it's 1960s, which we really do not promote them. Now, over here it says, okay, just, just to let you know, and I'll leave you links. Many of the most uh, revered. Re revered early church fathers, as well as a surprising number of scholars today, have boldly declared that the legendary gospel of the Nazarenes, which is a seen gospel, okay, was nothing less than a long lost original gospel, which legends holds was collectively written by actual 12 apostles in a period immediately after Christ's death and upon which all three of the biblical synoptic gospels were based. <clears throat> All right. So in our research, this is what I'm coming to. Church fathers. Look, I have full right after coming out of Watchtower at that time being baby Christian to check on validity of everything because I was confused. All I knew is Jesus came to me and I fell in love with him. But as far as doctrines, I was confused. And all I had next to me is a Zionist Christian for Israel and anything Scofield and, and, and Darby. Okay, so we were researching this. And please reread this again. It was the church fathers and scholars who consider a seen gospel original gospel. Okay, yeah. and that all other and all it. other gospels are based on this gospel. This is what they say. Not yeah. me, not Diana, them. Okay, it is recently published work indeed is that original lost scripture. 
It would be a magnificent treasure of unequaled value possessing incomparable relevance for the whole Christianity. The manuscript claims in no uncertain terms to be that same ancient work composed by the 12 apostles, and in fact, it makes an intriguing and compelling case for being just that. Now, if you, if you keep reading more, and I don't have, again, I don't have all my research materials where I am right well, now. I have about stuff it. big like this, even writings <clears throat> of Chrysostom. I didn't just got it out of my head and went into something just out of my head. And I wasn't into it. What I was doing is researching. I was in the process of research. I was trying to find out what is the truth and actual truth. Okay. So it says the legends of the lost gospel for nearly 2000 years, all we objectively knew of Jesus came to us primary through the four biblical gospels. But for all that time, a great and enduring Paul has Paul has hung over those lofty works. In the fourth century, the authorities of Rome decided just which of the countless books on Jesus in circulation at that time would make up the present day Bible, deciding once and for all, in effect, which works were to be judged as genuine and authoritative and which were not. Now, so th that's a very important point right, right there, because when you look at the Nag Hammadi writings, for example, we have a lot of Gnostic materials in there, and and mm -hmm. some of them do look very interesting, but then there's some that just look just way really out there. Just really way out, right. Right? And so this is what they were dealing with, is like the cases like that. But they made that decision 2,000 years ago. We don't have a control of that, but I'm glad that we can at least begin to see some of those writings that were back then, and that's only just a fragment of what was out there. Yes. Now, it says here, it has been whispered ever since the 4th century that much of the true message of Jesus was edited out at that time due to oppressive and theologically obtuse influence of Constantine. All right, so I am studying this, right? So I am going through it, not saying anything publicly, just studying, which I have full right to study. Bereans? Remember, we have to be yeah, Bereans, Bereans, and, pr Bereans yes. and prove all things. Who is anyone to dictate to me how am I going to study or what am I going to study, right? Okay, so here it says that uh, prior to 325 AD, however, many of the early church fathers had included in their writings mention of an earlier gospel, upon which... True. They claim the near perfect unison, the synoptic gospels. Here we go. Let me highlight this for you. That prior 325, prior to Constantine, the church fathers talked about this gospel. So it's not Yana and Steve. We are simply just research institute and we were researching church fathers. What's wrong with that? If you enter theological seminary, you research church fathers, but then it's, um, it's like an institution in theological seminary that it's agreed upon. We're going to go with the synoptic gospels as official because that was decided at the council, you right. know, and that's what they have put together and said, this is the only thing we're going to go by. So that's history. And we were researching this not teaching this at the time the only time that we actually he and not me even i was yeah. still not even well, for teaching it let at me, all let me discuss that just a little bit as well with the people lisa tesh was working with us as right. a volunteer mm -hmm. and lisa really took these things to heart and and i can understand why because uh anytime you know, when you're in the ministry and stuff, there are people that love you dearly and are very close to you. And Lisa was close to us. And uh, and she got excited over this information. Majorly. As, as we were excited researching it as well. But even uh -huh. Yana kept telling me, she said, you know, mm -hmm. Steve, we can't, this is not something that can be publicized. We have to wait. We, we really have got to study right. it out. And I agreed with Yana on that. That's true. We had to do that. But Lisa had just started her channel and she was really wanting to get this information out to the world. And, uh, and, and, and we 
shared with her, we didn't think that this was the right timing because we were at that time still actively looking to see, okay, we have the evidence that this is there. Yes, we found this book that this man claims was written from an original, the mm -hmm. Humane Gospel. And it was found in Vatican Catacombs. <clears throat> right, and it was found right? in Vatican yeah. Catacombs. But yet we were trying to find some way to, 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 to uh, validate the information he was claiming. Right, exactly. And, and Lisa, though, you know, I mean, she, uh, in all good intentions, I really think me, Lisa, she meant well from her heart. She really did. But she wanted the world to know, and Lisa put it out there. And, of course, a lot of people knew Lisa because of us. And so, therefore, it really exploded into a lot of questions. And people began to beat Lisa up. Her own family came against her over this. And that kind of – that made it more passionate for me because my love for her, I didn't want to see her just being beat up mm -hmm. and then nobody come to her aid. Right. And I got out there prematurely without – us doing the full due diligence of just because eventually we would have came to the conclusion we have now exactly. that there, this there, that's this, my point. This is no real document that we can that we can find anywhere, and uh, there were issues in it, and we had never had the full time to go through it. But prematurely, we got involved in, especially I did, not Yana, but I did. Well, I, in defending I was just, Lisa, uh, and then I became more passionate about it. And I had not concluded the research. And that was really a major mistake on my part because you've got to do the research. You've got to follow through with things before you present it to the public. Right. And, uh, and, and, and for that, we apologize and yeah, repent it already. Much so. We repent and, 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 and apologize again. And, and even for Lisa, and, I, I, my heart, I, I, you know, Yes. Listen, I, I feel for Lisa what happened because it, it caught, she's left it as well, okay? And I have to say that clearly. Lisa was, you know, because her family really got after her as well, and, and it's a good thing, but still it caused a lot of problems afterwards, and then it really got into some ugly things that should not have ha happened. So, anyway. Okay, so anyway, as I said here and read to you that prior to 325 AD, early church fathers has included in their writings mention of earlier gospels, right? Now, this Matthew, Mark, and Luke had all been based, mentioned, or quoted from by such well-known church fathers as, and these are the church fathers, Papias, Hegesippus, Irenaeus, Clement, Origen, Basil, Epiphanius, Eusebius, Saint Jerome. This document had gone variously by the title, and these are the titles, the Gospel of the Nazarene, Gospel of the Hebrews, Gospel of the Ebonites, and Aramaic Gospel of Matthew. For nearly 2,000 years, historians considered this work to have been irrevocably lost, but in 1870, a forgotten copy was said to have been discovered hidden away in a Tibetan monastery and was quickly translated from original Aramaic, published this time as the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Now, we are talking about a seen gospel going by many names, okay? Numerous historical references thus seem to confirm the authenticity of the 1870 manuscript, and many modern scholars since 1870 have concluded as well that this work is, in all likelihood, and I'm down here, so I'm highlighting this, the original source of much of the material that eventually found its way into biblical gospels. Let me ask you something. What is wrong with going into scholars and church fathers and digging out history on how a Bible came to be, what people thought at that time? Don't I have the right after being lied in a cult for over 30 years being born in it to go and search for truth and being a Berean? Of course I have that right. So this is exactly what I did. And Lisa Tesh being our volunteer sister who volunteered in our uh, Benun Institute of Biblical Research knew what research we going through because we presented her with, with the research. We trusted her. Instead, she embraced it. She claims to be sister in Christ for a very long time, very mature in Iraq and Jesus. But yet she's read it once or twice. She bought all copies out of Amazon. 
sent them to people, made videos about this gospel as if this was the truly true gospel, embraced it, immediately overnight became vegetarian and started to force her family, her children, her husband, not to eat meat. And we have told her and warned her, don't do that. This is just, we don't even know if this is true. But then of course, Stephen went on her defense. Stephen embraced it and started defending it while we were researching it. And then everybody said we are heretics while we didn't even finish research on it. Because as I said, I actually went into Clement, Irenaeus, Epiphanius, Eusebius, Chrysostom. I actually went to their sources and I was, you know, how I do research. I'm pretty good at research because I learned how to do it. And I was researching it as scholars do. Okay. So no, I don't see myself as a sinner for this. And I agree that Steve has totally jumped the gun by going public with this without finishing the full research and conclusion of the matter, which I'll tell you what the conclusion of the matter is. Okay, the stamp of authenticity, far more than the biblical gospels, this work has the feel of having been written by actual witnesses to the events it describes. And now I will leave it to you, please read this. But now this is where I started having major problems and I started seeing new age and Gnostic type of beliefs. And I checked and Steve checked with the Holy Spirit, reincarnation. I do not believe in reincarnation, okay? False doctrine, afterlife, losing the soul, hmm. Eternal versus reincarnation. But you know what did it for me? with this particular document. It didn't bother me that Jesus in this document supposedly called God mother, father, mother, mother, father, or father, mother, because God is not a man. The reason we call God father is due to a certain Hebrew name, but God is a spirit. God is not a man or a girl. Okay, this is false doctrine. So God is like a parent, like he's all in all. He's everything to us, his source. So, but if we call him and address him, his father, this is how Jesus addressed him. Okay, but my huge problem came in when this gospel was denying virgin birth. And Amen. it was denying virgin birth of Christ. And by just Holy Spirit within me, when Jesus came to me in 2010, I knew that Jesus is born out of virgin. I knew that he is God in flesh. So I have said no to this particular gospel and disregarded it. And so did Steve as false, as a deception. Okay, I just had to explain to you what how, how it all happened. And unfortunately, Lisa Tesh went public with it while we were only studying. And most likely we would come to this conclusion and say, oh my goodness, this is, this is not real. Which, which a lot of people in theological seminaries study the church fathers. So there is nothing wrong in looking through Christian history. Why would that be wrong? I don't like when somebody is telling me I cannot study this, this, this. This is what was done to me in, in the cult of Watchtower. We were prohibited to go and look up other things. So anytime anybody tells me, don't look up this or this or this, it's a red flag for me, but you got to hide. The truth will talk for itself, doesn't it? Truth speaks for itself. And truth says this is a false gospel and false accusation against our gospels. And this was our conclusion, okay? One thing, let me just share with you guys as well that I think is important. And that is even like today, there are millions of believers around the world. There are thousands that write books and do write commentaries on the Gospels to begin with, biblical texts, yes. things like that. And That's what was going on 
uh, 2,000 years ago when Jesus was on the earth and he had all the followers and after his passing, uh, there were many, many, many people writing. Uh, they were writing their documents, their books and stuff, their dissertations on what Jesus said. Now, if we take today everything that's written about Jesus, probably 99% of it is not accurate. All right. So imagine back then the same thing. Well, let's say maybe not, not maybe not that big of a percentage back then. Let's say 75 percent of it, though, was not correct. Uh, so this is what we what we have today. A lot of books are surfacing and some may be right. Some may not be right. We don't necessarily know. We just have to really pray about the matter and, and search diligently. But everybody wants to know if we could get a little bit of a fragment something else that told us about Jesus. It's exciting to know that. And just like the Dead Sea Scrolls, a lot of stuff in there is kind of wacko, uh, in my opinion. But right. then there's some things like the message I did yesterday on Armageddon, you know, and the kings of the East and finding that in the Dead Sea Scrolls, they actually speak, they don't call it Armageddon, but it's uh, so obvious they're writing about the battle of Armageddon and the sons of darkness, the sons of light. And it really helped bring and illuminate more information on that. You know, it's put a spotlight on the gospel, or excuse me, through the book of Revelation. So you have to glean from the things that you can, but don't take everything as the bona fide 100% truth, except what we do know is to be the canonical gospel. Right. So we, we definitely agree with our New Testament revealed by Holy Spirit to our heart. After research of all of this, we have come like two or three years ago already. So this is just being dig up as a past and brought up on the top of jacket and top of my personal life yeah. in the past when my ex-husband uh, left me and my son. You I, know, I want to speak I mean, on that issue. So well, the, the thing is that this is considered doxing, stalking, and harassing. The woman Cassie is making up alias names. And she's coming and harassing everybody on my Facebook, maybe even a comments. I don't know. She's saying she's going to Paul Begley, which she completely dislikes the man. And minute to midnight or carry or what is this other? Let, let me, and let she me she says about. that she's going to YouTube channels, uh, and they're going to say they are stealing money. They are not. Oh, that's a big uh, issue. Right, right, uh, exactly. I, I, I need Your, to address a couple of right. things on here. For those of you that. Maybe you started a payment on PayPal or Patreon and you don't know how to stop it. We can't stop anybody's no. payment. Uh, I caught, and, and of course, I've got more than 30,000 unanswered emails. So you could have written me and, and saying you wanted to get your payment stopped. Uh, the only thing I can do, like I did catch a message the other day on a Patreon, an older lady, she had written me and she said, I, that's not what I thought and I wanted to be able to stop it, but I don't know how to stop the payment. I looked up quickly for her a YouTube video on how to stop her Patreon payment and sent that back to her. Because years ago, people would write with one to stop their auto payment, say on PayPal. And we contacted PayPal by phone and PayPal said, you didn't initiate it. It's not your banking information. We can't do it with you. They have to initiate it themselves. So we did discover, and I think I'll do an article on our website so people would know how to do that, uh, that all you have to do is go to YouTube. There's two minute videos out there, three minute videos out there that tell you how you can unsubscribe on auto pays, PayPal, Patreon, anything that you do like that. And that's the only thing that we could advise you because we, we have no idea that people are still paying and don't want to pay. But, but even if we did know, we can't stop it for you other than to tell you get a video and watch it. Now, the other thing is as well, uh, the lady that's saying that she wants to go to Paul Bagley. <laughs> Paul Bagley knows all this as well. <laughs> Paul Bagley had me on his program mm -hmm. back when we were leaving this in right. the early stages. Uh, and I told Paul, I said, you know, Paul said, you know, we do our research like Jan has expressed here. And these are the things that it led us to, stuff like that. Uh, and he said, well, Steve, let, let, come on the program. Let's clear the air with the people so people know that's not what you believe. And we did that. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't go, Paul didn't go as deep into it on his program that time when we were out there. But privately talking to him about it and stuff, sharing with him the reasons why we went the way we did, he knows the story. Yes. So 
you know, I mean, yeah, it might make and, some good gossip, but I don't think Paul would want to go down that road either. Well, the you thing know? is, we, we, we left even Zionist Christianity, we disagree with support of political Israel. Uh, last three years have been a major... Um, a lot of changes for us. The, well, I would say transformation. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of praying on the knees to come because our desire is to come to pure gospel and truth of what the matter is. And Zionist Christianity, going under rabbis, going back to law, all of this. You know what happened uh, back then when we were Zionists? This is how it starts. And I, I want to warn all of you. At first, you start going back to law. You're going to say you have to keep Saturday, Sabbath. You're going back to law. And then Torah. You're going to start to Torah classes. You are looking to Jews for their explanation through Jewish lenses. Next thing you know, you don't want to use the name Jesus. Okay? There's all kinds of false accusations that this is the name of Zeus, which is not true. It's just from Greek, Iosus, Iosus, translated in English as Jesus. Okay? So, uh, we were under this influence ourselves. Yes. So, I know that this is a very big grip on people to take you away from pure gospel. So, you stop using the name of Jesus. You start saying Yeshua, and you think you're more righteous. Then you start Yehoshua, Yahushua, Yahusha, and yeah, all kinds even, of things. That's the other thing. Even right. in Hebrew, this is one of the reasons why I had a red flag on that, was the next thing you know, now you've got to debate on how to say the name of Jesus in Hebrew to begin with, and nobody there agrees. Right. So now, this is when you really realize that you got a problem. Right. And I will say this, too. Even on Zionism and things like that, because of what we learned through the humane gospel and mm -hmm. the things that we dealt with there, we didn't rush to a judgment on that either. On that, on that, on that, or at least we didn't rush to a judgment on that, period. We had learned from what we went through with the humane gospel, do the research, get the information, know it for a fact before you present it to the people. It's right. the same thing with the Nephilim uh, agenda there that we have discovered. We did a lot of... Of research before and speaking I want to tell you, and Miss Lisa Tesh, when she presented it to the whole world and did all this, she actually did admit it was her that started the whole thing by making things public before we finished uh, research. She saw the church fathers wrote of this book, Gospel, and considered it original of the 12 apostles. I mean, they had debates among themselves and they wrote treaties on this. The church fathers of our own Christian history, okay? Yes. Not something Steve and Yana came up with, by the way. But, and then uh, Lisa Tesh wrote an apology letter to Steve after all of these problems. And we buried it, put it behind. But now these two witches are digging everything out. And, and going in, even after stalking and harassing and doing private information, private life. That, that's uh, something that public. needs to be addressed. Let, okay. let me first, let me deal with that real quick. That's a very, right. the, the private information as far as names and things like that is a very serious issue. Mm -hmm. I yes. have came out as a whistleblower on CIA and the operations there. I did these in private meetings. I've touched the surface only on on YouTube, I never went deep, and that was because my own uncle, who is taught, was a top law enforcement officer in the state of Florida, also trained by the FBI, told me straight out, Steve, they will kill you, and they'll kill your family because of the information you know if you go public with this. And so when you begin to go out there, and that's what Lisa made the mistake on as well when she was taking my old passport and wanting to make these things public. These are things that now put my family in jeopardy because of my past. And I was kind enough to come out to try to share with people what I knew about certain political families and the evils that go on in this country as a whistleblower. That jeopardized my family enough as it is. But then when you go to start dealing with these issues about, well, you live here, you live there, and you do things like that, 
that's when it gets into an issue where I would have to deal with this on a legal scale because I have to protect my family. And most of our friends here would also want that as well, that our family is protected. You know, most of our friends think this is even ridiculous. We have to talk about this. Yeah, they don't But we want have us. to because you have no idea what this group is doing. I mean, it's, they are demonically... Uh, inspired and they have so much time they do nothing else I mean they go back and forth well, all day and night you know, and they don't you know it's like I don't know where they get the time because I have to care for my kids for family to homeschool to take out of affairs and ministry and research but they just have time to all do right. this let, on let, me, let me say this as well too the Bible talks about how that women will go and spread all these silly, silly witches, things which is okay? Yeah. And, and literally, it condemns what's going on. Right. And oh, perhaps, I, I was condemned because we have certain guests on like Celeste and supposedly she's demonic. You know, Celeste might be misguided. I don't agree with a lot of her theology. But she's got important information but we you just need wanted, to hear. Yeah, we are also journalists and investigative journalists. And we talk to all people, not yes. only Christians. Okay, so we can sift through information and give common courtesy. Also, a lot of people are on a different level of awakening of understanding scripture and we need to be kind because you gain your exactly. brother with love not with hatred well, let, okay okay then let, this is why I want to address this part here with these uh, with these women that are doing what they're doing mm -hmm. all right you know I'm not saying that you're not a Christian I just believe that you've gotten yourself under an influence that you shouldn't have got yourself under all right and I really think uh, that you need to go back and examine that. Uh, and and that's between you and the Lord. It's not between me and you. It's between you and the Lord. And I think you should. I already know from someone else that you got involved in this that has also written me privately and apologized for getting involved in this, mm -hmm. that what you've done has destroyed your own Bible study group. Yes. As a I result mean... of that. And that's why I say... I think maybe what needs to be done now, you really need to take the time to search your heart, search it with the Lord, and find out if what you're doing is the right biblical actions to start with. So let me conclude with this. If you want more information on deeper research on this particular gospel, which I did not want to bring it up, you know why? Because I am afraid. Because a lot of people have a lot of love for animals. American people love cats, dogs, and their animals. And I am afraid that if you read it, you can get deceived. Because parts of this gospel are very uh, touching. And I am afraid. This is why I did not want to talk. But this woman is bringing out past, you know, past five, six years ago, something like that. So six years ago, yes. When all of this, and I was only baby Christian, I mean, really baby Christian, but researcher already, I wanted to come to the bottom of the truth and I wanted Christian history. And here, the, the uh, Christian uh, scholars and Christian fathers of Christianity talk about this gospel as the real true lost gospel, okay? So I wanted to know and still wanted to know. So, but... At the end, I want to assure you of this. This gospel is not real gospel. It denies virgin birth of Jesus. So I assume that this is a gospel of a certain Jewish sect uh, in ancient times that uh, believed in Jesus as a man or a prophet or a good, a good man, but they rejected Jesus as God in flesh. This is why this is not a proper gospel. Also reincarnation. I mean, let me tell you something that in Judaism, today's Christian, Brother Paul Begley, uh, a lot of other Zionist ministries, are making bridges with rabbis, with rabbis. And they believe in reincarnation. And all these rabbis in Judaism believe in reincarnation. It's but prob nobody... Probably why that was written in right. there. Because so, it was a Judaizing belief. It was a with. Judaizing gospel. Okay, and that's what we came to conclusion. There were many sects that were forming after the death of Christ. And these were a group of Jews who believed in him, saw him as a good man, but they just uh, 
couldn't accept his divinity. Okay, so I don't want you to get caught into this. Yes. And it doesn't matter what you eat because Jesus said your salvation is not based on what you put in your mouth. Okay? Right. So I want to assure you, we are not in any support of a sin gospel based on finished research of what it is, based on revelation by Holy Spirit. We are no Zionists anymore. We are out of the Torah law because we accept the grace of Jesus and his law being written on our hearts. For past two or three years, we are speaking and exposing the truth. We All we want is Christ and truth. And here we go. Uh, as far as the financial issue, we have Patreon. Many, many YouTubers have. It is a legitimate pa uh, platform. It's not illegal. We are not putting any secrets there. A lot of them are made public. Sometimes our Patreon well, people... That, that's what got us in trouble to begin right, with, with exactly. YouTube is because... And so many of the patrons that were there, they were like, well, you guys don't do anything here because we're always trying to make it to where it's available for anybody and everybody. Uh, I had to focus back over there. Once we got our first strike and we were shut down for seven days, I realized then if I don't start putting that very sensitive things there, we're going to be shut down completely. Exactly. So and and you know, 99% of people know this. These yeah. are just false accusation. And if and they don't find accusation here, they go here and then they go here and then they yeah. glue on this and pick up on this because those are haters who hate Steve and Yana. So the thing is, you're going to hear don't about this. If, but you don't. if you don't, exactly. don't want to be here, you don't have to Either pick their, them and continue this demonic yeah. gossip or, or just leave it. And I think most mature Christians understand that what they do is it, completely demonic. And in, just in closing here, if you have are on Patreon or on PayPal and you are making the payments and you don't want to, in this video, in the description, I'm going to put two links and I'll put a little note on there, canceling your PayPal or Patreon subscription. Here's the videos, how you do it. Okay, yeah. so that it can walk you through it. Because believe me, if you don't want to be there, I don't want you to be <laughs> exactly. supporting this ministry by now, no means. Just in conclusion, one more time, let's wrap it up. No, we do not agree with the same gospel, number one. We are for the Gospels. We have, as revealed by Holy Spirit and Apostles, we are not Zionist Christians. We left Zionism. We left worship of Israel. Uh, we believe that Scripture has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And, and that today, events, what they're doing, they're using Old Testament prophecies and artificially fulfilling and making it look like it's prophecies. I'm not saying all prophecies have been fulfilled. There are some that still needs to be, and we are in a process of fulfillment. But most prophecies that they're saying our future have already happened. Okay, but they are feeding on this, the Zionists. Okay, and uh, so we're going to continue our work. We're going to continue exposing all of these things, continue searching for truth. If we make mistake, we're going to correct ourselves. We assure you that we have nothing but interest in uh, in, in always, truth. always wanting the purest. And on the top of this, uh, we continue having our Patreon, Israeli News Live Patreon. That's where you can find us. We have Israeli News Live main channel, Rise Up Children of God over here. We have Fact News Network. We also have back, back channels like Big Shoot, all under Israeli News Live. We have Israeli News Live. Dot org. And if you feel that you want to support this ministry, please welcome to do so. We have a donate button at israelinewslive.org and or through Patreon or through the uh, uh, United States mail. You have address on our uh, our uh, website. website is really well, important. anyway. So we just needed to address this issue. If you still need more addressing of this false gospel, I'm welcome to give you all the research material so you can come to conclusion yourself. But please, those of you who truly love animals, well, going back don't... to this again, it'd be a while because there's too much going on that right. needs to be covered exactly. right now. So anyway. I think this should really sum it up. And, yes. uh, you know, so right. let's 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 move on. I don't have time to waste on this. Right. Things. Thank you, thank you, friends, and soon we'll come to you with actual news that uh, th that things are happening. You have a blessed and wonderful day in Jesus.